Oh, YouTube, Air of Carthage here. What the crap is going on? This is the first of 20 days of Air videos in commemoration of your awesomeness and helping me get 20,000 subscribers. And the amazing thing about that is I never beg for subscribers. And you all continue to subscribe and watch my videos and like. And it is just a ton of fun. And so, you know, I really appreciate that. Uh, I, I really honestly think that my viewers and fans are what make this enjoyable for me. Otherwise, I would totally not feel like spending as much time as I do making videos. So I figured, true to form, I would go back to some of my Rome Total War uh, for the first video. There will be many videos to come. They will not all necessarily be just battles. I got some fun stuff in mind for you. So like I said, um, if you didn't see the announcement on my channel, in the feed or in the comments or whatever, I made the announcement that in celebration of 20,000 subs, I will be making one video every day for 20 days straight. So it is a 20 days of air type marathon. So I'm playing as the Seleucids here, and I forgot that I still had it in fast forward. Um, please stop fast forwarding. I've got four regular archers. I've got five phalanx pikemen with uh, like full attack and a little bit of defense. I've got um, four silver shield legionnaires with full attack and a little bit of defense. I've got two cataphracts with full attack, and I've got two gold gold companion cav making up my army. My uh, opponent is playing as Carthage. He took Carthage, so I decided to take the Seleucids. Um, he's got some excellent um, Sacred Band pikemen. It looks like four of them. He's got four Iberian infantry. It looks like he has uh, six units of slingers. He's got two Numidian cav, which is a cool one. Then he's got, got long shield cav on both flanks. So he has spent quite a bit of money on these Numidian cav. Numidian cav are cool, and they can be pretty useful. Um, but they're not real good in a melee, so as soon as they run out of javelins, they're kind of worthless. So when I bring Numidian Cav, I'd usually just stick to one. Um, and the reason for that is, is because you can use it to basically just draw an opponent out of position. I come in for an initial strike right here. Talk about a painful charge. Those slingers get hit by Companion Cav, which uh, has a deadly charge. My Companion Cav, of course, get away. My opponent did not react quick enough with his infantry or his long shields. So I was able to come in there and wreck a unit of slingers. Um, and help tilt the uh, the missile fight back uh, to my favor. Numerically speaking, my opponent has an advantage. I have a range advantage. If I had six missiles or six slingers against this many archers, I could probably win that fight. The main detriment, of course, is the slingers do have a much shorter range, so it it can be tricky. So here I'm using my companions, which are a little faster than my cataphracts, and then I'm keeping my cataphracts close by to ward off his long shield cav. Um, here my opponent makes a pretty smart move. He's harassing my heavy cav with his light cav, trying to draw them out of position. Um, not a bad plan. His javelins are going to cause very little damage. I think he does kill some of my cav. It's just the, the, the missile damage on the javelins is just not great enough, even with um, upgrades, to really cause a lot of damage. So here my cataphracts have their back turned. He did get a few kills, which is, to be honest, pretty, pretty impressive to kill four cataphracts with the uh, Numidian cav. Um, but, like I said, they're going to run out of javelins soon, and their effectiveness will pretty much be over. So, uh, I, I want to skirmish this out, and here, here's the basic gist of my strategy. For those of you who all may be wondering strategy, it's a risky strategy, but it's a fun one. So, the Phalanx Pikemen are not very strong, but there's a lot of them, and they can hold a long line. And so I spread them out, I keep them on defensive formation, and this is just to hold the enemy's attention in the center. And then Silver Shield Pikemen are the real striking part of my infantry. They've got better attack, uh, just a better all, uh, overall unit, and they will be used to outflank my opponent. The mix of Cataphract and Companion Cav, the Companions give me a slightly better speed in helping to catch um, uh, enemy Cav that can then be destroyed by my Cataphracts. Both units have very high charge. Uh, which will be uh, very handy in winning a cav fight. So you can see me kind of chasing off his Numidians. Not going to give them too much attention, though, just because that's what he wants me to do. I am firing some arrows out of the Numidians, and this caused surprisingly little damage. Um, I figured my arrows would chew up this light cav pretty quick, but they really didn't. So I think you'd have to mass the archer fire before it really started to make a difference. So I kind of chase them in and out a little bit. My opponent starts to move up some of his long shields, moves up his infantry, his slingers. Uh, my archers have a range advantage right now, and so I'm kind of taking advantage of that. You can see that I'm killing a lot of his slingers. His slingers um, are not overly effective in this case. Honestly, when I play as Carthage against certain missile factions, sometimes I bring slingers, sometimes I don't. If I was going to play against the Seleucids, I would probably bring some Balearic slingers, because the Balearic slingers will actually outrange 
um, the uh, the regular archers, and you don't have to upgrade them or anything, and um, they will pretty much pwn regular archers. Um, so Balearic Slingers are always a cool choice, they, uh, but you, you do have to use them right, as they are a little more expensive. So here in a minute, I realize that I don't really care what my archers are doing. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give my archers to to my enemy, and I'm actually kind of surprised what happens here in a minute. You'll see what it is, but it catches me off guard even. So I actually catch his uh, long shields here. He tries to run away, but uh, my cab is gonna route them. Long shields are a great light cavalry unit, but they're not a heavy cav unit. And when they get into a heavyweight fight, um, they get beat up quick. Um, so long shields have to be used right. Definitely an interesting unit. So here. Um, he brings his Numidians in, starts cleaning up my archers, which I don't really care, to be honest. I'm giving them to him at this point. He's going to run some long shields around on this flank, and I'm kind of trying to pay attention here in the center so I can kill his Numidian cav. And um, so I clicked an attack order a minute ago and killed some of his Numidian cav, but he's still got the one unit, or uh, both the units running around. You can see a few of them right here that I killed. I go ahead and decide to march my troops forward a little bit. I'm honestly not worried about his Numidian cab. I actually kind of expect them to rout even when they hit the back of my units, which is why what happens here happens. But I forgot that I'm using Phalanx pikemen. And Phalanx pikemen are supremely crappy. Um, so right here, a bunch of his Numidian cab does die when they hit my men from behind, but these guys have, like, terrible morale. And so you can see they actually break to a light cavalry charge. <laughs> But, uh, and then he's got these long shields just behind them. I do manage to turn my guys into them. So I'm going to kill his long shields. But right there, my general gets charged by his long shield and gets killed. So uh, this is what I get for depending on Phalanx Pikemen. Of course, my general is going to quickly be avenged by my cataphracts and companion calves, which absolutely destroys that um, long shield unit. So my opponent's remaining long shields, uh, they actually route, and this is the amazing part, they routed one of my Silver Shield Legionnaires. Silver Shield Legionnaires really have good morale. Um, so that one caught me off guard, but he's going to get countercharged by Cataphracts here and Companions. His Iberians and long shields are just going to get absolutely pummeled. I intercept his long shields here with my Companions. Companions are going to pwn these long shields. Um, and then my Cataphracts are just going to absolutely pummel these Iberian infantry. I've got them into mace mode at this point, so... Um, it's going to be a relatively uh, relatively short fight. His guys do get more kills than I expected they would, but they're going to get mopped up. So the infantry fight is about to start. Over here on this flank, I'm engaging his Iberians with my Silver Shield Legionnaires. This will be an easy win for my Legionnaires. Um, and I'm running my cab clear around the flank. His um, his Sacred Band infantry would absolutely chew up my uh, Phalanx Pike. I'm, I'm counting on the fact that he probably didn't put his men out of defensive formation. And because they're not... This is going to allow me to charge them from behind. They're not going to kill my Phalanx Pikemen fast enough if they're in defensive formation. My opponent's doing a good job of trying to counteract my cab charges. There's only so much he can do. He's just completely outnumbered. My Silver Shield Legionnaires hit the Sacred Band from behind. So now, even though they were a superior unit, yep, they're on defensive because they're not pushing forward. So see, they're not going to cause the damage. Whenever you're using Sacred Band and you're using them against an inferior pike unit, you want to take them off of defensive mode so they push forward and begin the poning. Here in the center, I've charged his general unit to try and cause the most impact. Um, I think his general's somewhere around here. I don't remember where his general's at. It's somewhere right around in this vicinity, engaged with all my cav. I was hoping to find him. You can see... Um, at this point, he admits defeat. His uh, troops were surrounded and defeated. Good game to my opponent. He used his Numidian Cav pretty well. Got more routes than I actually expected that he would, but in the end, he wasn't able to pull out the victory. Let's take a look at the battle statistics. Casualties inflicted. Eh, nothing too special from any of my units. One of my companions got 52 kills. Wasn't bad. 58 from one of my Silver Shield Legionnaires. Anyway, I got some more footage for you. Let's go check it out. So yeah, that's, that's kind of a fun battle. So um, Seleucid versus Carthage is a fun mashup because the Seleucids definitely have the cab advantage and especially when you consider that they have scythe chariots. Um, the pike advantage is definitely in favor of the Carthaginians though. Sacred Band pikemen are completely and totally superior even to silver shields. And the silver shield legionnaires though give the Seleucids a lot of flexibility. So I think overall the Seleucids have flexibility. Uh, the Carthaginians though definitely have the heavy infantry power in that kind of fight. So let's load another battle replay, go on to this next one. I thought this was another fun one. So, you know, a lot of times people play CWB rules, and CWB rules are great, don't get me wrong. I think they're good for the most part, but really, to be honest, they ban elephants. And elephants are really fun, and they're not really that big a deal. Like, I think one unit elephants in an army is totally not a big deal. 
And so in this match, I didn't state any rules. My opponent just came in. I let him pick whatever army he wanted to. I picked the army I wanted to. So this time I am playing as Carthage. I've got five gold, gold, sacred band spearmen. I've got one unit of these um, uh, elephants, which is just the regular old light elephants, you know, not the big archer type or armored type. I've got three sacred band cav, and I've got um, two slingers just to soak up archer fire. I've got three Iberian infantry hidden in the woods. I was trying to hide the elephants and remembered you can't. And then I've got two round shield cav uh, gold, gold. So I've got kind of a diversified army here, and I was going to use the elephants to support my round shield cav, so round shield cav is not a threat to heavy cavalry like cataphracts, but with the elephants involved, they are a threat because the round shields help um, boost the numbers, and then the elephants um, have a bonus versus cavalry, and the cavalry are scared of the elephants. So you can actually defeat heavier cav units by using elephants to support your cav. Now the Seleucids also have access to elephants. Um, so it doesn't put me in a particular advantage here, but see, like the CWB rules, they make Rome extremely powerful versus Carthage, but if Carthage could bring a unit elephants, all of a sudden the field becomes very equal. So I've never understood why elephants were banned from CWB, or at least, you know, like one unit. I don't understand how scythe chariots can be allowed, and like, you know, heavy chariots from the other factions, but for some reason elephants are. That, that's never made sense to me. Um, and never will make sense to me because elephants are easy to route and they're very expensive and my opponent has brought a unit of armored elephants um, he's also brought a lot of silver shield legionnaires he has not upgraded them though all the upgrades I've seen are here on his general which is an interesting choice really wants to keep his general alive so he's not upgraded his infantry but he does have a lot of them he's got a really good elephant unit and then over here even though they're not upgraded he has a freak load of cataphracts five units of uh, or no four units of cataphracts so um, again, no upgrades, but that's a lot of cataphracts, and um, these guys are dangerous, even not upgraded. So um, yeah, my opponent's troops aren't the best, but he's got a few troops that could turn the tide to his favor if things really came down to it. So here's the, here's the strategy that I see at this point. Pull my slingers forward, start to absorb his missile fire. Um, go ahead and march my sacred band troops behind. I'm not worried about an infantry fight. I will easily win an infantry fight. I have to dispatch those cataphracts. And the way that I'm going to do it is by a huge mass of troops. My opponent does not know these Iberian troops are in the woods. So I'm going to take my round shields and go ahead and run up this flank in case I need them. And then I'm going to take all my sacred band cav, my elephants, and then leave my Iberian infantry here. You can see his cataphracts down in the woods. Uh, my opponent is going to try and bring in a, um, a massive flank charge with his cataphracts. He was fairly sneaky with them, but I did see them. So always keep your eye on the mini-map and keep your eyes peeled. He's got one unit that's already charging towards my sacred band to intercept them. I think he's hoping to get a quick flank charge. And uh, here, like I said, he didn't see my Iberians in the woods. I pull my Iberians out, and the Iberians alone would get massacred by the um, cataphracts, but it's the numbers game here. So if we watch, it says frightened by elephants, and it's probably going to also say something about numbers here in a minute when the rest of my cabs get there. So watch, my cab is going to bog down these cataphracts. Here comes the numbers, frightened by elephants. There you go, boom, chain route cataphracts are gone. So what would have otherwise been a long grind out fight that would have favored the cataphracts is quickly ended by a uh, morale effect of the elephants and um, the overwhelming numbers of my troops in that vicinity. I turned my pikes into his uh, cataphracts here and he did not notice it so I massacred all of his cataphracts there. So my opponent just lost all the real striking power of his army and now my uh, sacred band troops are pretty much in position. I'm going to slowly march them forward and my guys are not on defensive mode. So I'm going to show you the difference. You saw that last battle? So watch this battle and see what my guys do when they're not in defensive mode. They're going to push forward. So even though the pikes on the silver shields are longer, my guys are going to push forward and begin using their superior attack to just absolutely massacre these troops. So watch, my guys don't stand still. They're going to reform and they're going to push forward until their pikes actually hit one of these targets. So just uh, watch this here. Right there. So see my pikes just push forward and push forward and push forward. And then their superior attack just starts to cut right through the enemy like butter. This unit's going to do the same. So as soon as they engage, they're going to push forward until their pikes start to land killing blows. So uh, I've got my pikes here just to, to keep these infantry units in check. I know I could go ahead and end the fight now, but I want to end this fight with some gusto. I do have an advantage on my opponent, and I want to make it cool. Um, I'm not trying to be a jerk, so yeah, I don't think I'm trying to be a jerk. My opponent still does have his elephants here, though, and they're a threat if he used them right. Um, so I am keeping an eye on them. Here comes, I'm going to use my Sacred Band Cab to destroy all these archers. This ought to be a pretty painful pummeling right here. 
I completely forgot about my round shield cab also. And here, my opponent charges his elephants in, which is a good idea, but he doesn't bring them all the way to the flank. And uh, that's going to be uh, not the best use that he could find for him. Whereas my elephants here, I've now engaged all of his troops, so I've pinned them down. And watch the charge from my elephants here. This is just absolutely brutal, and you're going to love it. <laughs> so here's a fountain of Seleucid troops. And then I'm just going to keep clicking uh, attack orders and just running my elephants down the line, uh, tossing men like crazy. Don't let your elephants ever get bogged down. Just When you get elephants in, just run them right down the line. Like Don't let them stand still. It's just like with chariots, just take them right down the line and let them do their business. So right there, just absolutely chain routed all of the already doomed Seleucid infantry. Uh, his elephants routed um, in the face of my sacred band pikes, but came back. So here's my uh, smaller elephants versus his large armored elephants. <laughs> it's not going to be a very quick fight. <laughs> These units just keep fighting and fighting. Um, but his would eventually win this fight, but I'm going to reinforce with Cav. Here's my round shield Cav. This is kind of reminiscent of, like, Lord of the Rings <laughs> in some ways. Um, my round shield cab really won't cause any damage, but the scared effect and the tiring effect will rout his elephants. Uh, my opponent has regrouped units um, around the field. I've got my uh, sacred band cab running amok back here as well. Uh, these guys are just taking out random units that are coming back from routing. And then um, I think I've got some Iberian infantry running down these uh, re reforming... Uh, Silver Shield Pikes. Yep, so uh, tons of fun here. All kinds of good stuff going on. Here's my Iberian Infantry blobbing up on these uh, Silver Shields. These Silver Shields would actually probably do pretty well if I let this go on for too long. But you can see my guys did manage to get close enough to actually start attacking, and then I'm going to outflank with uh, my Sacred Band here. But these guys route when they get close to getting charged. My Elephants run amok from being tired, even though I did take them out of combat. And then the enemy elephants have run amok as well. So when elephants run amok, they pass out of your control, and they can kill your guys or the enemy guys if they uh, start to do something. So my opponent has this last unit of uh, silver shield pikes here. I'm just going to charge them from the side with my round shields. They'll rout. Their morale is pretty poor at this point. This unit turns on me, though, and so I'm not going to kill all my round shields, even though it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll bring in the rest of my cab. But check out these elephants, man. These slingers must have really pissed off these elephants because they come back for more. Uh, so check it out. These elephants running them up kill a whole bunch of my sacred band cab. And then these slingers, like I said, must have really pissed them off. <laughs> Look how far this guy flies, man. That was an amazing launch. So his elephants come back and, uh, and kill a few of my slingers just for the uh, just for the sheer joy of it. You got to be careful of units when they run amok, but this could just as well be your own guys if you're the one who brought the elephants. That's another reason why I don't understand why elephants are always banned. Elephants. Um, or a risk reward situation. For me, it was definitely a reward in this battle, and uh, but it can also be a huge risk. So there's my guy celebrating the victory. Good game to my opponent, and check out the number of kills that my elephants got right here. <laughs> 167 kills. That was beautiful. A fountain of Seleucid troops. Oh man, I love it. So I've got one more replay for you. Yes, one more. Um, there's some parts of this replay that are fun, other parts I'm not as proud of. I am a little tired, it's late at night, so my, my micromanagement wasn't what it should be, and it didn't work out quite like I thought, but it's still a fun battle. So I wanted to play a battle as the Barbarians, and a faction that I don't know I've ever really showcased for you all too much, is I haven't really showcased Britannia, and uh, Britannia is actually a very, very dangerous faction on Rome Total War, very underestimated. Um, they have some very interesting units, and let me explain some of these. So I've got two slingers up front, I've got six units of chosen swordsmen, all with good upgrades, and I have three units of these woad warriors. Now, woad warriors have the fast moving trait, which makes them very quick on the battlefield. They have terrible defense, you can see, because they're not wearing a shirt. Um, but they have huge attack, they have the same attack as these chosen swordsmen. Um, and so these guys are fast moving, they've got war cry. I've got a unit of druids back here to support my morale. Um, and then I've got two units of head hurlers. And then I've got one unit of barbarian warlord, which is a five hit point heavy chariot. And then I've got two units of uh, British heavy chariots, which is a three hit point heavy chariot. And I've got two units of light chariots. So yes, I have a lot of chariots. Uh, the only one with any real superpower is the uh, British warlord. Um, the heavy chariots are pretty strong, but they're not near as crazy as the five hit point warlord chariots, which is what most people bring uh, all of, and I probably should have in this case, to be honest. Um, my opponent is fielding five units of heavy cavalry, not usually a smart idea against chariots, um, and then he's got a lot of infantry. 
Um, so I think he's hoping to overwhelm me with numbers. He's got some long-range Cretan archers. His uh, Royal Pikemen back here have some massive upgrades. Um, so for Barbarian troops, a unit like this is extremely dangerous from the front. All of these units are very, very deadly to my infantry from the front. His cavalry should be easy for me to dispatch, which is why you're going to see me just um, bring my chariots right on out and um, get ready for the fight. So I'll show you this. I decided to get out here and just charge his cav because my, my chariots ought to just rip right through his cav like butter. Um, I do make a mistake here though. When my chariots attack, I don't keep clicking attack orders. I let them get bogged down and when that happens, it can be very bad for your chariots. So I get the initial charge. Let's watch this. I charge in initially and my chariots just start to absolutely thrash his cav. Um, just start chewing them up. But once your chariots get engaged, you need to keep them moving. And you'll notice here, I let my guys start to sit still. And uh, as soon as they do, they have low defense, and they start to get killed really fast. So uh, I made I made a big mistake here. I should have um, I should have clicked more attack orders and kept my chariots moving. If I would have, it would have absolutely killed his horses. But my opponent won kind of a pyrrhic victory there with his companion cav. Um, his companion cav got really badly thrashed. You can see all of them laying on the ground. Um, so I brought up my head hurlers. Head hurlers have a 17 missile attack. For those of you who haven't seen them, they are devastating. Um, so um, they will chew up even urban cohorts. Um, in fact, their missile attack is just as deadly as urban cohort pilla, except these guys only cost 400. Another cool thing about head hurlers is they have actually a pretty high melee attack. So they are useful in a melee fight um, after they've discharged their ammo. So I'm going to wreck two units of phalanx pikemen. Should have targeted royal pikemen. But it doesn't matter. I just want to eat up some of his infantry units to help me out for later. My opponent brings in a companion cav charge, but I counter charge with my chosen swordsman. And in the snow where my guys get a combat bonus, they're going to chew up these companion cav and extended melee. This cav was way too predictable. My opponent shouldn't have made this charge. In the process though, however, my opponent routes my druids, which very much disappoints me because I need their morale boosting support. However, since it's still being fought in the snow, I'm hoping that my guys will still tend to do well. Now, I need to use my Woad Warriors correctly here in order to outflank my opponent, because I do have to outflank in order to win these fights. There is a huge morale effect, though. When the Barbarian troops use Warcry and Charge, they get a combat bonus. You can usually cause a chain route if you do it right. You all have seen me do it playing as the Gauls before, and that's what I'm hoping to do, but the loss of those Druids was bad for me. So here I'm going to war cry all my men. That's them chanting and going into the war cry mode. So they now have that bonus. It does not last forever though. So you need to attack quick once you go into war cry. And sometimes you'll have to use war cry more than once. My head hurlers are ready for a, a duke it out fight also. I almost forget about them, but I do end up using them. So watch what I do here. I charge forward, catch this unit, and I'm going to outflank this unit and try and quickly route them because I need to free up more of my chosen swordsmen for the fight. This unit was beat up and routes. I quickly outflank, and I'm going to get this uh, unit to waver and route also because now his royal pikes are right behind. I'm going to do the same thing here, try and get these units to route. My Woad Warriors um, did get the drop on some of these units out here, but look, some of my Woad Warriors end up in a head-on fight with these Royal Pikemen, and they are going to get eaten alive. My opponent turns the two units here, and my guys are just going to get absolutely bested on this flank. So don't underestimate Woad Warriors, but I didn't use them as good as I could have right here. They're going to cause some damage, but they could have been much more effective. But in the center, my uh, my Chosen Swordsmen are outflanking these Phalanx Pikemen, and just out or these are actually Royal Pikemen. And uh, they're absolutely just chewing up these royal pikemen, uh, unit by unit. There goes the uh, the Macedonian general, and then I bring in my light chariots for a real strike on the um, on the general unit too. But because they lost their general at routes, and then my light chariots, the one unit I have remaining, is going to go ahead and continue to break the morale of these men. So uh, my opponent loses in the center. He's going to win on this flank though. My wood warriors put up a pretty valiant fight. You can see that they've killed a great number of these royal pikemen. But since I didn't outflank properly, uh, they got killed. And Woad Warriors are pretty cheap for what you get out of these guys. So, a uh, really underestimated unit, in my opinion. So you can see my opponent marching his Royal Pikes towards me. I'm going to back my guys off for just a second, redo their war cry. I'm going to run down the routing troops with my Light Chariots just to make sure they don't come back into the fight and tilt it. And then I'm going to pull my head hurlers into this fight as well. I forgot about them. They do have fast moving, so they're very quick around the battlefield. And they, uh, they have a pretty fair attack. Like, a, it's not bad. 
Alright, I think I war cry my troops. Or I've already war cried, yeah. So I war cried again. I'm going to charge my troops forward. I'm trying to catch these units on the flank. I'm successful there. I'm going to pin down these pikes and then outflank with my head hurlers. And look, I get an immediate route on these royal pikemen. And then I outflank over here with the we chosen swordmen. No so my, my opponent's army is in full fight. route now. So I was able to defeat the, uh, the Macedonians. Uh, so never underestimate Britannia. They are a very tough faction. Um, and they're hard to fight with almost any other faction. Best thing you can do to Britannia is eat them up with missiles, but the problem is, is their chariots are probably going to own the field when it comes to cavalry. Uh, you can see my light chariots actually ended up with the most kills from killing a lot of routing units, and my chosen swordsmen, man, they just hacked a lot of those pikes to bits. So you can see the damage that chosen uh, swordsmen can cause when they do get into melee. And then check it out up here, where's my woad warriors? Um, one of these units got 67 kills. This is the unit that kind of got into the flank of those royal pikes. Also give you an idea how tough those guys are. So anyway, day number one of uh, the Air of Carthage 20-day video marathon. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. You got 20 more days of awesome videos coming your way. Um, and just hope you're excited about it. And once again, thank you for all the subscriptions. Um, all of my fans and viewers are great, and I appreciate you all.